Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about fats, also known as lipids, as a type of macromolecule. Okay, first thing is that if we have a look at fats, they're made up of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. That's it. Now, I spoke about carbohydrates. They're also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But what you'll find with carbs is that usually the amount of carbons are matched by the amount of oxygens. Now, here for fats, what you'll find is it's predominantly just carbons and hydrogens with a very small amount of oxygen molecules attached. Now, what you can see is I've drawn up the basic monomer structure. So this is the smallest subunit of fats that we call fatty acids. So I've drawn up three different types of fatty acids here. And you can see that they're predominantly carbon chains with a bunch of hydrogens attached to them. So we call them hydrocarbon chains. Now the difference between one fatty acid and another is simply the length of this carbon chain and also the types of bonds between each of these carbons. I'll talk more about that in a second. You can see that each fatty acid also has this accessory group attached to it, this functional group, which is called a carboxyl, which you can see contains the oxygen. So that's all, not much oxygen at all. Now what you can see is these three different fatty acids. The first one I've drawn up is what's called palmitic acid, and it's what we call a saturated fatty acid. Now when you've got a saturated fatty acid, what it means is this, every single carbon is attached to a hydrogen atom. That means all the possible bonds that a carbon can make are going to be filled up by hydrogen atoms. And you can see that all the way across. Now a saturated fatty acid, you can see, is linear, it's straight. And that means that if you have multiple fatty acids that are saturated and linear, they can stack nicely on top of each other. That means they are solid at room temperature. Because they stack nicely, closely together, it means that they are solid and they're solid at room temperature. So this includes most of the animal fats are saturated fats. Now as we move down, you can see something called a monounsaturated fatty acid. The one I've drawn up here is oleic acid, and you can see that it's very similar to the palmitic saturated acid, except there's one difference, that there is a double bond between two carbons. Now this double bond means that the carbon is not saturated with hydrogen ions. And because there's only one double bond, we call it a monounsaturated fatty acid. And what this double bond does, as you can see, it puts a kink in that fatty acid, and that means that if you were to get multiple monounsaturated fatty acids and stack them on top of each other, they don't actually stack nice and tight because of these kinks present. Now this means that they are liquid at room temperature. And what you'll find is these monounsaturated fatty acids are predominantly plant oils. So this includes peanut oils and olive oils as well. Again, liquid at room temperature. Then we move down to something called a polyunsaturated fatty acid. The one I've drawn up here is linoleic acid, linoleic acid I should say, and it's got two double bonds. So polyunsaturated means many unsaturated carbons and you can see two double bonds and that puts more of a kink into the fatty acid and that means again it's going to be liquid at room temperature. Now what you'll find is that our body cannot store fatty acids in this form because these carbon chains are far too long. So what our body does is it takes three fatty acids and it connects them to a molecule called glycerol. And you can see glycerol here has three carbons, it's got eight hydrogens, it's got three oxygens. And what it does is through a dehydration process, I spoke about this with carbohydrates, removes an oxygen, uh, removes water in a dehydration process. We remove these hydrogens here from the glycerol, then we remove the OH groups from three fatty acids, and they click together and you can see we've got three fatty acids here clicked to a glycerol and now what we have is something called triglycerides. So our body stores fatty acids connected to a glycerol backbone, three of them, as triglycerides and triglycerides are stored as fat deposition. And so that's there for energy use in case we need it or it's also there for cushioning or support or even anchorage holding organs into place. Now what you'll find is that the types of fatty acids we can attach to a glycerol are variable. So you can have all saturated, that makes it solid at room temperature. You can have all mono or polyunsaturated, which makes it liquid at room temperature. For example, if you look at cocoa butter, what it has is it's got palmitic acid as one of the fatty acids, it's got oleic acid as one of the fatty acids, and it's got a polyunsaturated fatty acid, which we haven't drawn up here, but can connects and clicks into place, okay? So 
What we've spoken about here is triglycerides and fats and fatty acids and lipids and their use as a macro molecule.